Hello, Cyprian here from FU4 and welcome in this new video tutorial for Paraview in which we'll be talking about time. So time is a huge component in engineering, especially when you do simulation, uh, which is dynamic. You want to know what happens to your model uh, according to, to the time uh, axis. So this is what I'll show you in, in this video. So we'll have a look at this example model from the Paraview examples, uh, and I'll show you different kind of option uh, to display this model uh, in the correct way, according to time. So let's start. Let's start by resetting the interface. So there is a button here, which will uh, basically delete everything and set up the interface back as it was uh, when you opened Faro for the first time. So this is how I will start today's video. So let's start by opening this uh, very interesting model. So it click on open and I should be in the example folder of my Paraview install. Open the examples and you have a file called can.exe2. So open this one, okay. And when you load the model, don't forget to check this little box at the uh, left of variables to import all the variables inside Paraview. And what you see here uh, is some kind of cube. So you have, of course, to reorient that in the right direction. So let's click on this axis. So I'm getting the right view uh, of this model. And let's have a look at first. So you see you have two views. You have animation view and time inspector. Let's open the time inspector. So if you don't see any of those views, uh, go in the view here and just activate them and then they will show up in the in the interface. So the time inspector shows you basically all the different time steps you have uh, stored into this exact model. So it looks like I have only one set of data, but actually uh, if you play, you see that my model moves and the little cursor that I, he I have here uh, goes along the different time steps. So I have 43 time steps, which are stored into this model. And I can play with those time steps by using the different uh, navigation buttons. So using this one, I'm going to the first frame. I can go to the next frame like that. Or, and you see it moves the little cursor, or you can just drag and drop the cursor to, to get at time increments. So this, this is the basic to visualize something according to time. Now let's, um, let's visualize some uh, data. So let's color that with um, large equivalent uh, plastic strain EQPS. And let's have a look at uh, what may seem like a strange phenomenon if you see that for the first time. So right now, um, my model is loaded. I'm in the first step. Let's just play that and see what I get. Okay, so I get, uh, it doesn't look very interesting, right? Uh, everything is uh, red, this is blue, this is becoming red. I basically, I don't see anything. So what is happening here? Well, this is because this is happening because my range of colors of the legend here is not uh, rescaled to the right range. If you see, if you look at the numbers here as basically zero in blue, and it goes to a very, very small value, 1.2 E minus 38. So I, I have a very, very short range of data here. And why does this happen? It's happened because in the first step, I have no equivalent plastic strain, right? Because my model is not, um, is not compressed at all. So there, there is no stra strain in this model. So basically everything is zero and the range here is extremely small. But if I go to the last step, I do have a lot of plastic strain and basically this goes over the range and everything becomes red, so I, I don't see it. So how can I correct that? Well, if I go to the last step, and I suppose that all the data here, I can use one of those buttons here. So there is a rescale to data range. If I click on this one, you see that immediately data and my axis becomes scaled up to the last step instead of uh, being scaled to the first step. So if now I come back to the first step, and I play the game animation, now it, it looks much better, right? Now I see uh, really what I wanted to see. I see 
uh, the block going on and I see where, you know, where I have the equivalent plastic strain maximum. This is red. So this is what I basically want to see. So what is this? Why is this happening? Because mm, the first time I saw that, I was thinking, well, this is a bug or something like that. But actually, it's, it's definitely not a bug. Um, the problem, well, it's not a problem, but the, the thing is that when you have a data set along to time, the amount of data contained into this file is huge because uh, basically data for each time step have to be stored. So you're multiplying the amount of data of one time step by 43 if you have 43 time steps. So imagine if you want to uh, load them all and play the animation, if part of you have every time, had every time to go through all the time step and uh, find the best one and then rescale the data. Um, well, depending on the size of your data set, that might take a very long time to, to perform and that would basically slow down all the software. So uh, I guess the developer chose to, the first time you import the, this, it automatically rescaled to the first time step. Uh, but if it, it's basically your engineering judgment to find the best suitable time step where the data range is the best and then rescale to that time step. Uh, of course, you can also, if you know what is the range of data that you want to rescale, there is a rescale to a custom data range, and then you can basically input the data range and rescale all the time steps to that specific range. So that's the first thing uh, you need to know about, uh, about when you're looking at a time uh, model. So now let's look at another thing because um, you have several ways to, to view this animation. Um, so let's look at the animation view right now. So now I was in the time inspector. Now let's look at the animation view. And in the animation view, we have several modes uh, which will allow us to visualize those data. We have sequence, we have real time and snap to time steps. What's the difference? Well, snap to time steps will basically um, import the number of time steps you have saved in your uh, in your file. So if you have a simulation tool that will uh, that is saving 43 time steps in one file, you will see 43 time steps and uh, Paraview will just by default show you those 43 time steps. But Paraview also have the uh, much let's say, better ways to rescale the data. So for example, if you, you want to see uh, the total time and instead you want to see a specific number of frames, so you can choose the mode sequence. Let's say I want only 10 frames or 20. Uh, the number of frames here taken at the pass will be rescaled. And when I run my model, I will see only those uh, number of frames that I've chosen. Or uh, I can use also real time. And in this case, I can choose the real duration of my simulation. So here is 10 seconds. And if I play back that, you'll see that it, it will last 10 real time seconds. So that's, that's wanted, right? If, uh, because if you have, let's say, you have an experiment in real life experiment, which lasts one minute, and when you simulate on computer, your animation, uh, you know, you can show the animation going very fast in one second. Uh, well, it doesn't correspond to the real time experiment or you cannot show, you know, on one side, the, the real time experiment on the other side simulation, it, it doesn't match. So you can use this real time and you can change this duration to 60 seconds, for example. And in this case, you will see that, uh, well, let's come back yeah, to the first time step. And you see that the animation start to match um, the real time. Now, um, if you are like me and you look at this, you're thinking, well, okay, it's nice. I have 60 seconds. Looks a bit slow. It doesn't look very fluid. You know, isn't there a way to make it look better? Because, you know, I need to, to create that for my, my slide deck. I need to get, I, I need it to look really awesome. So, how do I change that to make it look better? Well, you're lucky because there is a filter 
in Paraview that will allow you to improve the smoothness of this kind of uh, uh, animation. So it's called temporal interpolation. And let's let's have a look to see how smooth the, this can make this animation go. So I'm just keeping exactly what I have right now, but I will now use this filter. So I go and filter, and there is temporal, and this is the filter called temporal interpolation. Let's apply that. Now let's uh, open a new render view like this. And let's look at the temporal interpolation, this one, with the same color. Yeah. And let's link this camera. So right click, link, choose the other view. And now I have, um, I have the li this linked. Let's go back to the first step and let's put that again like this. So on this view, I'm looking at temporal interpolation. As you see, the small I is here. On this view, I'm looking at this, so I, I will change that. So I'm looking at this. Now let's play the animation and let's, let's compare. So as you see, on the left, it's, um, it's jerky. It's not going very smoothly. But uh, on this side here, animation has been interpolated um, much better than uh, without this. So it's a very cool way to, to define this and to, to make your data look better. Now, um, you must notice also uh, that you must note that this filter doesn't always uh, work. So in general, it works when you have um, time, time type of uh, analysis, like dynamic analysis, like this one. Uh, but you have if you have moving fields through a static mesh, for example, or you have uh, remeshing, ad like adaptive mesh and type of stuff, which change. So the when the meshing change from one step to another, well, this temporal interpolator will give you some error. So good to know. Now let's look at one last thing, which is uh, very useful. Once you get everything set up correctly, like you want in this view, choose the right angle and let's try to save this as a video. So it's very easy to do. Just go to the file and save animation. Choose a place on your computer where you can write files. Um, so I'm calling that my anim. You can write, you can call it as you want. And you have a, a, some options to choose the resolution of the image, the quality you want, and the number of frame rate. So once this is all set, uh, chosen, just click on OK to generate your animation. And when you play the animation, you will get uh, the exact replica of what you had in Paraview. So that's it for today's video. I hope this was very useful for you. You learned a lot of things. And if you did, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Please like my video and uh, post some comments, ask some questions. Uh, I'm always happy to answer any kind of questions you have. And I'm also um, using that to think about the next videos and the kind of content I can create for the blog, because this is all for you. I'm spending a lot of time to teach you all those basics, because I know this can be useful and this, this can improve uh, anyone's engineering skills. Thank you again for watching all that.